Meat Boy is back. I'm going to show you guys how to make a simple and delicious pan sauce that will pair with whatever protein you're cooking. Let's take a look at what we need. The only ingredients you really need are the pan you cooked that protein in as well as some water. You could literally just take the water, put it in here, boil the water off for a few minutes, and then you'll have a nice reduction with all of this fond, which is the caramelized protein that's stuck in the pan. Classically, a pan sauce does have uh, some tried and true ingredients that always work, and it's still gonna be just as simple, just as quick. You're going to add a whole lot of flavor though. Wine, beef broth, everything organic, as reasonably high quality as I can get. You know, if you were making your own wine, if you were making your own broth, that's how you go a little higher. Uh, we have some thyme and peppercorns and shallots and garlic, as well as uh, the steak that we cooked in the pan. Again, this could be anything, chicken, pork, beef, even fish, whatever you'd like, you can make a pan sauce from it. Did you guys know that wine was vegan? Oh man, really, uh, what are they running out of ways to market their products? They gotta go for the vegan crown now? So I'm gonna put this pan back on the heat. We're gonna quickly prep the aromatics. Now this can very easily be carnivore if you omit the wine because we're gonna take out all these flavorings at the end. We're just gonna strain it really quick. And the way we put these in, it's gonna be easy to do. So the shallot and garlic, we're just gonna cut in half. So garlic like that to expose all the cloves. Shallot down the middle. One ingredient I forgot because I actually put it in the freezer is some butter. And the colder this is, the better it will prevent your sauce from breaking or oil separating. This is just, any grass-fed butter is great. We have Finlandia on Frankie syringe meat. Ideally, you get some raw butter from a local farm. So. so we got some grease left in the pan from the steak. We're gonna use that to get the aromatics going. Put a couple peppercorns in there. Thyme is my favorite spice. Probably the only ingredient in here that isn't really, really classic. The garlic, the shallot, the peppercorn is definitely something you would see in just about every pan sauce. And we'll put our salt in now. And this is really quick, just you know, a minute or two. Just get a tiny bit of brown on the garlic like that. Same with the shallot. Then we're gonna take our wine and put maybe half a cup in. Then you wanna take your wooden or metal spatula. And if it's metal, so you don't eat steel, gently scrape all of that caramelized fond off. So as this wine boils, as it evaporates and reduces, it's taking the flavor from everything in here. The fond, the garlic, the shallot, the peppercorn, the thyme. And it's gonna make a very, very tasty and concentrated sauce. You'll know the wine has reduced enough when you run your spatula through it and it takes maybe half a second or a second for the liquid to go back in place. So when we're at this stage, we'll add our broth. I just have some beef broth, maybe half a cup. Ideally you have something with a lot of gelatin, like bone broth, uh, because that will help thicken this up. Otherwise you're gonna have a fairly thin sauce. Uh, but as we said earlier, you could do this with just water. All you would have done is you know, put the water in the pan and reduced it as much as possible basically and, and put a few teaspoons of that reduced liquid onto your steak. You know, if you're making chicken, use chicken broth. If you're making fish, use you know, a shellfish stock or lobster broth. You could use white wine, cider, any flavor component that you wanna to add to your dish. So we're gonna do the same thing with the broth, reduce it down. So the sauce has reduced all the way we have maybe two or three tablespoons in the pan here. We're gonna take it off the heat and then we're just gonna incorporate some of the butter we had in the freezer. So the residual heat in the pan should melt this butter nicely into the sauce. And the butter doesn't have to be in the freezer, just straight out of the fridge is fine. And of course there's a correct amount of butter to add from a culinary perspective, but if you're trying to add fat to your diet, you, know, you can incorporate quite a bit of butter into the sauce. All right, so we melted about two tablespoons of butter in there. Now we can strain this out. There we have it, our delicious reduced steak sauce. 
as we've mentioned throughout this video, there's so many different ingredients you can use with this, but in order to really develop that nice flavor, you want quality and you want to make sure to reduce it enough. Now, obviously, if you just put water in the pan with some salt and pepper, it might taste okay, but you get a quality wine, quality broth, reduce it all the way. You have you know, the acidity, the deep flavors of the wine, the deep flavors of the broth, all of those aromatics and seasonings and flavorings you're adding, and then the richness of the butter or whatever fat you decide uh, to blend into the sauce. You have something special that even a picky meat eater would enjoy. Now, over a year ago, I think I did a lemon butter sauce for fish, uh, which is something that you guys can check out. It is a great example of something simple and delicious that you can put on pretty much any Thing coming from the ocean. I mean, that being said, with most fish being polluted, you got to be kind of picky now. Uh, but hopefully, you guys enjoy this. If you want, you know, a nice thick cut ribeye like this, or some affordable grass fed butter for your sauce, definitely check out Frankie's Free Range Meat.com. Please drop a like on the video, leave me a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.